This is Carl. He's from the US, but he's been working in Asia since the 80s. He studied Mandarin Chinese in Taiwan, worked in China, and now resides in Singapore. He shared his experiences as a Westerner in Asia back then, what Singapore was like in the 90s, and why expats will never truly be a part of Singaporean society. A special thanks to the educational platform Upgrad for sponsoring this video. More about it later. You remember your first impressions of Asia when you first come here? First night, something crawled on my lake, and this is Taiwan, and it's hotter in Taiwan than Singapore in the summer, if you can believe that. So I jumped about three miles in the air, and my friend said, oh, don't worry, it's just one of those flying cockroaches. I said, what's a cockroach? Yes. I was like, just? <laughs> and, it, and it was this huge thing. I woke up, I was screaming, mm -hmm. very embarrassing. Oh, you never see such a thing. Um, anyway, that was my first impression. And then the morning, it was <clears throat> doujiang, which is soybean, and um, manto, manto and dan, which is a manto, a white gluttonous piece of bread with a an egg stuck in the middle, and yo tiao, which is fried dough, very oily. So that was my first experience when I first arrived in Taipei. Now you can find all of that here in Singapore, anywhere in Ch the Chinese speaking world, Hong Kong, what, what have you. So those are traditional morning breakfast things. How Singapore changed from 1995. Uh, tremendously, because the Marina Bay Sands wasn't here when I first came. That wasn't here. The Boat Key, the Clark Key, the Robinson Key, they were here. I remember my first experiences uh, with my with my customers of Singapore Technology taking me there. And I'm going, first thing I said, what's a key? <laughs> you know, we Americans don't use some of the terms that they use here. And then I also feel that the Singlish was much more pronounced here in the 90s than it is now. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, yes. I think everybody must have been watching Friends for the past 10 years. I see more and more people, more and more Singaporeans wanting to have a, an American accent. It's like, they do. They absolutely do. Now, whether they think it's better than the British accent, I don't know. But Singlish is, is a little rough on the ears at times. I'm not criticizing, but it is a little rough on the ears. You know, one of the things I've observed here is the tremendous amount of blue collar and white collar growth from the Filipino community. It's amazing, it's tremendous. So if you want to see what I think is something marvelous is all the Filipino community that are here that are helping Singapore. I don't. I think it goes very much un, unnoticed. I think it goes unnoticed. It should be more noticed. And then of course there's all the IT workers from India who are actually bringing incredibly valuable technology here uh, and, and skills. And then the Malays as well. And then of course there's the Chinese who, who are from here, many of them. And then there's also hundreds of thousands of Chinese coming from China that are bringing technology here. You probably know this resentment sometimes for some people that like foreigners come and like steal jobs from locals. Absolutely true. What is Singapore? It's exactly like America. What America does and what Singapore does is take the, 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 the best, the cream of the crop, survive and manage and contribute to the, soci to the society here. Those that don't end up being disgruntled and they don't last long and then they leave. And then there's lots of foreigners who hang around here for years and years and years, even decades, thinking that they're going to get the PR. I think it's it's a pipe dream, yeah. first of all. I never have that viewpoint, that impression I want to have a PR for Singapore. I don't, because I think there are other places in the world that suit me more better. But I think that there is no utopia in the world. There is no utopia in Singapore. Singapore is blessed, but it's not paradise. But Singapore has a lot of great attributes. So make the best of every single minute of the day. That's what I think. And I think that Singaporeans cannot rest on their laurels because the Singaporean government, government is very, very smart. And they realize if you stop the flow of talent coming into this country, this country as a small country of five million people will cease to be competitive. It's the same with America. It's the same with Europe. What's happening in America? Hardworking Indian and Chinese nationals are climbing the corporate ladder in America. Why? Because they work hard and they have great skills. What do you think the, the most important skills that everybody should develop to be successful nowadays in career? Oh, very simple. Listen 80% and talk 20%. So, I'm glad that Upgrad became the sponsor of today's video. Upgrad is the Asia's largest integrated learning and career development company that has touched over 7 million total registered learners across 100 plus countries. They offer a wide range of programs in collaboration with top universities and industry experts to impact the lives of working professionals by helping them upskill while they work. For professionals who wish to boost their career with the most advanced business degree program, the company offers Upgrad and Golden Gate University's Doctor in Business Administration program. These 
program has five specializations, including finance, leadership, and marketing, and is ranked number one for working professionals by the Washington Monthly. Upgrad also has a referral program that offers cash reimbursement up to $500 for referring friends and colleagues to enroll in their courses. So you can earn extra money on the education of your friends. The good news is that Upgrad also provides personalized career guidance and job placement support to its learners, helping them achieve their professional goals. So follow the link in description to find the best path to grow your career. In the meantime, we will continue our video. Sometimes Asia has like um, not the proper image in the eyes of like Westerners, especially like Singapore. For Singapore, for sure, like people have this, they have biases, biases against Singapore, which are not true. And what would you maybe advise or what would you say to the well, it's human nature. Everybody has biases. Yeah. We all do discriminate against some kind of thing. You need to keep yourself squarely in the middle because you have dragon slayers who can never see anything positive coming out of Asia and coming out of the Chinese world and everything is always low quality, low class, terrible. Stay away from those people. But then you've got the other side, which is the, the panda huggers, uh, especially in the Chinese world, which is they look at everything through, through rose, rose colored glasses. And I'm telling you, if you want to stay in Asia, survive in Asia and be, and be really sharp when it comes to Asia and everything Asian, you need to stick squarely in the middle with your EQ. And that's very, very important, um, which is don't c criticize and complain when you're in a foreign country because you can, you can leave anytime you want. Yeah. So learn to adapt, learn to adjust, realize it's not your country. And that's another thing. Uh, I've been in Asia 40 years. Asia is not my home. It may be my adopted home, Taiwan being my second adopted home, Beijing maybe being my third adopted home, um, uh, and that goes for Boston being my original home and of course where I live in Seattle. But I, I realize and, and I realize the very, very key point is we're all of us foreigners here, we're just guests, accepted guests, and and the goal is to be humble as an accepted guest and realize things are done here differently than the West. But realize sometimes they do things here for a reason. The women wear umbrellas under the sun when it's not raining. You know, why is that done when it's not even raining? Well, it's because uh, it's a social status thing, as you know. Nobody wants to appear to have darker skin. And so that in itself is a bias, isn't it? There are other things. For example, Chinese people take baths at night always, not in the morning. Well, why is that? I believe that's a cultural thing. They feel more comfortable taking a bath in the evening. Now, some Chinese people do take baths in the morning, but it's a, it's a traditional cultural thing for lots of Asian people to take baths at night, not during the morning. In the West, we would never dream of getting up in the morning and, and going to the office before taking a shower, most of the people I know. But it's just a different cultural thing because traditionally, showers were a luxury in the Asian world 40 years ago. Yeah. They were a luxury. They were. Trust me, I know. I was in Taiwan when there were no showers. Do you use Chinese now in Singapore? Every single day. Like in a hawker center, if you go to a hawker Every center, day. you use it, yeah? I don't use English at the hawker center. Right. I refuse to use English right. at the hawker center. How do they, how they react? Well, I will sometimes speak Hokkien, and then they, they do a double take. And then they all say, you know, your, first of all, your Mandarin is better than mine. That's a really difficult thing for uh, a native to say, but they, they truly believe it. I, you're taught, when you're, when you're taught Mandarin, you're taught, especially in Taiwan, you're taught to be humble. So when you say, no, no, I don't, they say, nali, nali, which means where, where. And it's just a humble way of saying no. It's a humble way of replying somebody who's giving you a comment. You never say, oh yeah, thank you. That would be the inappropriate, and anybody who says that who's, who can speak Mandarin has not learned Mandarin the proper right. cultural way. Right. The, it's not enough to learn a foreign language yeah. or to learn Mandarin Chinese. You need to learn the cultural customs of the country. I speak Mandarin here, and I've been learning Malay since I arrived. I use Malay all day long. Every morning I leave my co-living space where I live, I use Malay and I say good morning and thank you and have a good day. They love it. Can I say? Well, you say salamat jalan, salamat pagi, which is good morning and goodbye. Saya orang American. I am an American. I yeah. might say that. Ini barapa, how much is this? I've learned, a f I've learned all these terms uh, on my own 
It really bothers me when native Singaporeans don't realize how important Malay is. You know, I can tell you that Malay people get, are so happy when they hear you just attempting to speak their language. But what's your favorite dish in Hawker Center? Gung Bao Ji Ding and Gun Bian Si Ji Do. Gung Bao Ji Ying. Believe it or not, in America they call it General Cao's. Who, I don't know who General Cao is. In English they translate it to General Cao's chicken. I'm going, who the heck is General Cao? And then Four Seasons String Bean. I love those because in Taiwan, those were so cheap when I was a student and then when I was learning Mandarin. Um, those are my two best uh, dishes. And they're not, e they're not cheap anymore and they're not so easy to find. At, the, at a hawker center these days, because to prepare good Chinese food, you have to go to Ding Tai Fung. That is really a good place to get Chinese food. I might have a bias here, but I have found in Singapore, more of the Taiwanese style restaurants here are the better quality Chinese restaurants. What do you need to do like, to negotiate well with Chinese people? Well, first of all, they need to know your, your principles. I very rarely drink alcohol, very rarely. Did you have to like drink with like many of them want to try to get you to do that, but that's a that's the wrong way to do business in the Chinese world. It's Is it wrong? I, I thought it's like a cultural thing, like to you drink to you eat together, drink together. No? A smarter person would order, which is what I always did, would order one glass of white wine and make that white wine last for two hours. That's the smart thing to do. Western people cannot, we can't hold a torch to the Chinese drinking, drinking etiquette. And when you, and as you've heard the term loose, li loose lips sink ships, Lord knows what you're going to say after a few bai, bai zhou or xiao xing zhou, yeah. which is rice wine or gao liang zhou. Those things will eat a hole in your liver. So you don't engage in such activity. You don't have to do that because the Chinese people will respect if you just have a glass of wine. They'll say, oh, I guess he likes the light stuff. No problem. The goal is to communicate, have fun, be friendly, be humorous, uh, and be respectful. Max, you and I, and any other Western person, is never going to be Chinese. And so you should never even try to be Chinese. You will never succeed. You will never succeed. We are always foreigners, not only in Singapore, but in Asia. Remember that fact. You're always going to be a foreigner. There's nothing in culturally that's going to change that. A Mandarin-speaking um, foreigner is still a Mandarin-speaking foreigner. You'll gain the respect. You'll never be like the Chinese. You don't think, like, even in Singapore, you wouldn't be, like, fully accepted in society? No, even though I am accepted in Chinese society because I've been married to it, Chinese woman for 30 years and I am in the Chinese society but there's always a little barrier number one which you just have to accept at the end of the day if you weren't born in Singapore you're a foreigner it should never bother you that you are always going to be a foreigner East is East and West is West but the two can come to a close I'd say consensus and that's what I've done I live on Ferrer Road and I walk to the Ferrer Road MRT every single day. I say hello to everybody that I see because that's just my personality. You'd be amazed. Half the people don't say hello back. And I, I wondered, why is that? And that includes foreign nationals, Chinese, other national, nationalities. They just don't say hello. And I'm going to myself, you live in such a pristine place like Singapore, and you don't realize every day is an opportunity to do something new, something interesting, something cool with your life or make a, a cool new relationship with a person. But with an attitude that I'm entitled to not talk to somebody or, or I'm too entitled to talk to this person or that person, you're, you're blocking yourself and you're uh, off to new opportunities. It's, it's something that we as foreigners who are living here should realize our time here, Max, you, I, our time here is limited. Make the best of every single minute of the day that you can to build something. Oh, it was super inspiring conversation with Carl. It's always so cool to see people traveling the world, learning new skills, developing in their career, learning new languages. And if you guys want to constantly develop in your career, try Upgrad as your lifelong learning partner. YouTube thinks this is the best video for you. If it's bad, it's not my fault. Blame YouTube, so go check it out.